Hey, now I heard some of you guys out there want to use your wired stuff wirelessly, or, you know, more audio files, I guess, are more into that, because, you know, phones these days don't really have 3.5 millimeter jacks, but what if I told you there's an option that can also go... What if I told you there's an option that can also let you go wireless or wired? It really depends on how you're feeling. This is the Fio BTR5. Let's talk about it. All right, first off, disclaimer. This was sent to me for review, but this won't affect my review in any way, shape, or form. Everything you're going to hear here is going to be my own personal opinion. Now then, on to what this thing essentially is. So this is a wireless Bluetooth DAC amp adapter thing. It's it's a lot of things in one. So um, essentially, it's a DAC amp that lets you use your wired headphones or wired earbuds wirelessly by being the wireless bit for them, connecting to your um, devices, whether it's your phone, your tablet, or your PC, or TV, or whatever you feel like, even gaming devices, if you if it like allows Bluetooth connections. That's essentially what this is, but you don't have to just purely use it wirelessly. You can also use it as a wired DAC amp, in which case the performance should supposedly be better, which I do believe because I've had a similar product in the past, which is um, the BTR1K, also by Fio. It allowed me to essentially do like the same things, but probably not as good as this one because this is a much older product. I can use it as a wireless adapter, so I can use my wired stuff wirelessly, or I can have it plugged in and have this act as a wired, you know, DAC amp, or to some people, if you're a gamer, you're probably more familiar with them being called like, you know, external sound cards to improve your audio. And that's where um, this kind of interests me, the gaming aspect of it. Can we use this for gaming wirelessly? Can we use this for gaming wired? Is it is it sensible? Does it make sense? Is this a better option for some of us who are like looking into like sound cards for gaming and stuff like that? You know, like how Razer has those sound cards you can plug into. Um, en enough rambling, let's open it up and let's talk about it. All right, starting off, we have a very nice holographic box and within this box, we of course get the device itself, a clip-on clippy case attachment, a short USB-A to USB-C cable, a USB-C to USB-C cable, a warranty card, and a manual. <laughs> All right, now the BTR5 is a very capable device as you can use it either wired or wirelessly through Bluetooth 5.0 and it can handle basically any audio codec. And if you're into it, it can also easily connect to devices through NFC. Battery life is listed to be around nine hours, which I would say is actually very accurate. This little guy's got a very long spec list, so if you really wanna check out those specs, I'll leave a little link in the description for you guys to check it out. Now when it comes to the build of the device, it feels quite solid and it's kind of similar to phones in that it's made of metal around the sides and it's got glass front and back sides, which is technically good for connectivity and feels nice and all, but I'm a little concerned about the glass sides just a bit in terms of like durability so i'd be a little careful with it moving on on the bottom you'll find a usb-c port which is used for charging as well as connecting it to your devices as for audio inputs we have a 3.5 millimeter jack and a balanced 2.5 millimeter jack for all you audio files out there another neat bonus is that that 3.5 millimeter jack isn't just a headphone jack it's a headset jack so it does accept microphone input but only in wireless mode for whatever reason now moving on to the sides there is nothing until we move to the other side where we'll find our controls for volume as well as pairing and turning it on and off and going through menus on the device itself. You may also notice this little hole, which is actually a microphone for when you're using this wirelessly for calls and stuff. Now the BTR5 does come with a clip-on case with little clips so you can clip it to your shirt and stuff like that, so that's always nice to have. And just for fun, here's the size comparison between it and the older BTR1K that I have lying around. You know, just in case anyone was curious. Now you may remember me talking about going through menus on this device, and that's because there is a screen with menus go through, where you can essentially adjust various options baked into the device, such as turning on and off the charging functionality of the USB-C port, so that it doesn't sap energy from your phone in case you're using it wired. If you want to take it a step further and make some more fine adjustments, there's actually an app for the device, where you have a lot of control over the device, including like messing with the Bluetooth modes. The app also lets you take a closer look at the EQ presets, as well as allows you to customize your own EQ in case you're into that. Before all that, you of course have to connect it to your device, but what's kind of interesting is once it's connected, it'll actually show you on the BTR5 what codec it's using, which I personally think is a very useful information. Of course, you also get the battery life meter, as well as the volume setting it's on. Now for those of you who will be running a wired connection, you will actually get information on what bitrate you're running at, which I think is pretty neat. The BTR5 can actually also be connected to two different devices at the same time. However, it can't do playback from both the devices at the same time, which is unfortunate, but I'll explain later. All right, now, does this do pretty well with the basics, you know, music listening and whatnot, wired and wireless? Honestly, yeah. Wired, it is a given. It does a really good job and really brings out the sound. The tuning seems to be neutral if you don't adjust the EQs and whatnot, you know, if you don't touch any of that and just keep it as, like, standard, like, plain. What it'll essentially do is it takes whatever attributes your earbuds or headphones currently have and boosts them all up a little bit. Gives it a little bit more of that oomph if it's got some oomph. Gives it more punch if it's already got punch. Gives a little bit more room. Not a whole lot of room, but it gives it a little bit more room. It just makes everything overall a little bit better, which is nice. And 
button. In wired mode, this is fairly noticeable. In wireless mode, it is still kind of noticeable, but a little less so than wired. But, but you know, the, the, there is a stark difference, I think, for some people if you listen to it wirelessly and wired. Wired is always going to be better, but for its wireless performance, it was quite impressive, to be honest. Because um, wireless, you expect things to be kind of lossy, but um, in my experience, it was not that bad. I didn't feel like it was all that lossy at all. It was quite nice. Now, another standard use you're probably curious about is like um, how well the mic will do, because there is a mic built in onto this in case you need to make calls and whatnot, and you know, you don't have like an inline mic on your earbuds and stuff like that. Now, for those of you who will be using the built in microphone on the BTR5, this is how it's going to sound, though I'm sure most of you guys will be wearing on your shirt to talk into it. So this is a more realistic representation of how it's going to sound in, in, like, in an ideal environment. Though, for those of you who will be using like an inline microphone built into like the cable of your headphones or your earbuds, um, there is an override function. So if my cable does have a mic built in, or maybe I'm using a headset with a microphone with a boom arm or whatever plugged into it, um, it will use that microphone versus the one on the BGR5 by overriding it. Now just to show you guys that the microphone override does work, I am currently using my Ethos microphone plugged into my BGR5, and as you can tell, rather than using a microphone on here, it is using a microphone on here, you know, this, this the, the inline microphone. And this is great if you're like more into using your inline microphone versus like the built-in one over here, but I'm sure some of you guys also won't have an inline microphone built into like the cable of your earbuds and might be more curious about using the built-in microphone on the BTR5, in which case you're probably curious about how well it'll do in less than ideal environments. <laughs> Alright, I'm looking for the place to try out on the ideal conditions in an anime convention. So there's too many goddamn people, and it is loud as shit. So, um, it'll allow you to get an idea that you can hear my voice. Yeah, well, that's, that's the extent of this uh, built-in microphone here, then. So, yeah, that's as good as it's gonna get. Alright, yeah, cool. I've returned from the con and uh, formulated some various opinions. So, when it comes to, like, the overall usage of this thing, it's it's, a, it's clearly a mixed bag. From what you just heard, the performance of the microphone in a crowded space or a very busy, loudish space was not very good. And, you know, even then, in a more ideal environment, the microphone built into it was just okay. So you're going to have to be relying on, like, an external microphone from, like, your, um, well, this one doesn't have an inline mic, but basically you'd have to rely on your inline mic. And there's a few caveats to that. The inline mic only works if you're in wireless mode. So, you know, if you're plugged in physically and you're using the wired mode of the DAC amp, the mics don't exist. They don't work for some reason. Um, that's a bit of a missed opportunity, which is kind of bad for gaming, which I'm going to talk about in a little bit. I firstly want to address the audio files before I tackle the gamers. So for audio files, this device honestly does pretty well. It has a surprisingly good level of sound quality for like my earbuds when it's both in wired and wireless mode, which I think is kind of nice. You get added convenience for our like high quality wired tech that we want to make wireless and connect to our phones. So audio files out there should generally be very like satisfied with this product and even surprised, I'd say, by the quality of sound that we're getting out of it. Those of you who will be using it for calls, I think will be definitely kind of disappointed because the mic quality wasn't that great. And pass through was nice and all, but if you can hear, the quality that you get does drop a bit. So like the sound quality you'd normally get wired with your inline mic isn't going to be as nice when you're using it wirelessly because you know that's just the nature of bluetooth you're gonna lose a little bit in that department for whatever reason but i think for most audio files out there the ability to use this for calls is it's kind of like an extra thing and most of you guys out there usually don't care about this stuff but for those of you who do you know the mic's not great and the ability to use the inline mic is it's nice but you know the quality isn't well it's, it's just not gonna be as good when you're wired and with mics concerned that's when we're gonna address the gamers so you know first off like audio files it's a pretty okay product now as for the gamers it's it's a, it's a mixed bag, and I think it's not the best thing out there for gamers. It's definitely not going to replace a USB like um, sound card for like headsets, and that's because of the mic situation. As I've mentioned before, for whatever reason, when you're using the BTR5 in wired mode, the headset ability doesn't exist. The mics doesn't exist. It's just a pure headphone amp DAC combo at that point. No mic functionality whatsoever when it's in wired mode, which I think is kind of a missed opportunity because some people out there would really appreciate that. Gamers specifically, but you know, I'm pretty sure some non-gamers would like to be able to um, use the mics built into their device while in wired mode when they're listening to music. Like, I think laptop users would appreciate this option, but for whatever reason, they decided that if you're going to be using it wired, you don't get a mic. So that's that's not good for gamers. So it's not going to replace your sound card for like headsets and whatnot, unfortunately, because of that fact. Now, regarding the wireless performance for gamers, it's uh, it's a very mixed bag, but overall, it's, it's not looking good, but... <laughs> It really depends. There's just, um, that's just the nature of Bluetooth and gaming. Let's get into that a little bit. So if you've been 
researching a lot about like using Bluetooth stuff for gaming, you may have run into this thing called Codex, which I've mentioned before. Whatever codec you're using will also determine your latency in gaming. So certain codecs are a little bit better at transferring data and having better latency than other codecs. And whatever codec your device is using, whether it's your PC or your console, will determine essentially kind of like how fast your um, latency is going to be. Because while the BTR5 does have all the codecs, it has to have a codec to work with on the other end. So if your device is running on SBC, you're basically screwed because that's a very laggy codec. It doesn't have the best latency in the world, nor quality. If you're on AAC, it's a little bit better. Typically when people are looking for better latency with Bluetooth, they're usually looking towards things like Aptex and Aptex LL or Aptex Low Latency because, you know, that it gives you low latency. But even then, the whole codec thing is a mixed bag because not only do codecs matter, what your device is using in terms of its chipset also matters. So two devices can both have Aptex LL, but one device can have worse latency than the other just because it's using an older chipset. And the opposite situation can also happen with things like AAC, which is not necessarily the fastest, lowest latency codec, but it can be faster than Aptex in some cases, depending on the, the chipset. For example, when I was playing PC games, it was actually running off AAC, and the latency I had was very minimal. It was barely noticeable. Like, when I'm playing the game, it was hardly there. I really had to, like, listen very, very carefully and watch the movements in synchronization to catch the latency. So I was quite surprised that through AAC, my latency wasn't bad. It was it was quite shocking, honestly. On the other hand, when I was using AAC on my iPhone, I got more latency than I had on my computer, which was kind of strange. But it also kind of depended on what game I was playing, which was also very interesting. For example, when I was playing Dead Cells, in the beginning, the lag was very noticeable and it was pretty bad, but then it slowly got better, as though the device was just kind of like warming up and, you know, providing better latency and connection. It was kind of interesting. Meanwhile, the latency for games like Pikmin Go just kind of stayed pretty bad. Some games apparently just handle it a little better. It's just a lot of complicated things here when it comes to latency and gaming and Bluetooth, specifically Bluetooth. Long story short, if you're going to be using Bluetooth for gaming at all, whether you're going to be using this device or something else for Bluetooth, make sure it's using like a lower latency codec and that both devices have that codec so they can, you know, talk to each other. And even then, your mileage will vary depending on like the chipsets they're using as well as um, the distance you are from your device. Just a lot of factors when it comes to Bluetooth. It's a, it's a mess. <laughs> now, if you're going to be using this thing wired for gaming and it's just for like headphone usage, you're perfectly fine. The sound is actually still really good because, you know, how well it affected the music, boosting everything and making the quality overall better. It does the same thing for games, but even then, you still also get that when it's wireless, unless you're running off SBC, in which case um, the quality isn't great. But if you're using anything else that isn't SBC, your quality is still pretty good wirelessly. In either situation, whether wired or wireless in my testing, when it came to, like, gaming on my PC and stuff like that, I did notice there was more clarity, there was better detail retrieval, which I found to be really nice when it came to playing, like, competitive of shooter games and this was a lot better of course when I was playing it wired because I had no latency in that case and the DAC amp also just happened to work a lot better and give me more of that detail and clarity in that situation compared to wireless of course when it comes to competitive I really wouldn't like recommend using Bluetooth in general I would use like more proprietary like wireless connections if you're gonna do that or just going wired so you know competitive if you you know, it's just gonna do a lot better wired. That's just how things go. Now, when it comes to more casual play, same thing. Quality is really good. Everything's a little bit more boosted and things sound better when they are, of course, wired. But since you're playing more casually, you can get away with a little bit of latency when you're playing like less competitive games, just because like things aren't as dire. Unless you're playing games like Dark Souls or Elden Ring, in which case um, timing matters or just a casual game where timing matters in general, because the latency just might get you killed because that, that's just how it is. So yeah, overall for gaming, a very mixed bag with a lot of missed opportunities. Like if they just update this thing to give us like headset support when it's in wired mode, um, th this thing's gonna get a much bigger thumbs up for just, you know, being a good small DAC amp sound card that could use headsets. But since it can't use headsets when it's in wired mode, uh, for gaming, I, I don't know if I can recommend this if you're into that. All right, now on the track of missed opportunities and stuff when it comes to gaming specifically, the fact that we don't get dual play or, you know, dual playback because you can connect to two different devices, but you can only play from one device at a time is kind of a missed opportunity just because like if this was able to have double playback from two devices we can play games on our console and be chatting with our friends on discord from our phones but you know i understand why they didn't do that because that would take a hit on the battery life like it's got a nine hour battery life right if it was playing back from your phone for discord and your game console at the same time uh you can expect that battery life to be cut in half and more so i i understand why they did it but i would have liked to have had the option at least another missed opportunity is the fact that we can't use wire wireless mode along with wired mode at the same time, you know, like a hybrid mode. So once this is plugged in and is wired, it is purely a wired device. It can actually connect to 
a device wirelessly, but it's not going to play from it. It's going to focus on that wired connection. So that's also another missed opportunity because, you know, what if I want to plug it into my gaming device to listen with nice quality and, you know, once again, connect it to my phone wirelessly for Discord. Honestly, all these missed opportunities just pertain to gaming specifically, and I can understand why they didn't think about this. It's not a gaming product. It's an audio file product. But all these things, if they just had it um, in mind, I feel like it would make it really great for gamers in terms of like our um, ease of use and like quality of life for gaming as a you know, little device. But once again, it's an audio file device. It's not a gaming device. Completely understandable why it doesn't have these things. Though, it does seem like they can just do a software update to have these functions added in. It's very unlikely that it would happen, but maybe they'll see this video and they'll, you know, realize that um, they can tackle the gaming market. Or, or if we're lucky, they'll even create a new product specifically aimed at gamers. But, you know, I'm just pulling at straws and hoping for like things that probably won't happen because, you know, it's an audio file company. I don't think they're going to tackle gaming products anytime soon. All right, with all that aside, for gamers, I'm going to have to say it's just, it, there's just better, there's just better options out there for you. Like, the only gamers I can see who would even like think about using this are people who are also audiophiles. The only good gaming use this thing will provide is like better audio quality when you're playing games in wired mode. And I guess if you're playing wireless mode, it's going to be a mixed bag. If you got the right like codecs and whatnot and the you know, just the connection's good for you, then yeah, you can use it pretty okay, like, wirelessly. But unfortunately, I can't recommend it to everybody for, like, wireless capability in terms of gaming, just because of the variability of our devices and codecs and whatnot. Now, when it comes to wired, like, you know, wired is fine, but if you're going to be using a purely wired device for gaming, I'd probably get something else. I can only imagine someone wanting a, this for being you know, a very compact device for gaming when they're on their laptops or on their mobile devices and stuff like that. So I guess it makes sense in that kind of case. But once again, overall, it's an audiophile product. So that being said, for audiophiles, no problem. Like, this is a good product if you're an audiophile. It's just when it comes to gamers, which is, you know, the the people who watch my channel, I'm sorry guys, um, this isn't gonna replace the sound cards out there that you're using. I was hoping it would. Like if it, like once again, if it just had the ability to um, use headsets while wired, that already makes it kick ass. But in its current state, it's an audio file product. So, you know, I'm just being a hopeful gamer out there. I'm a little disappointed, but maybe because of this video, we'll see better things in the future. So yeah, that's basically all I have for today. So if you do wanna buy this product, I'll leave a link in the description. If you buy from there, I get a little slight kickback, helps me run this little channel here and you know, if you want to see more content, maybe I'll get a new version focused on gamers. Maybe not. Um, but regardless, if you want to see more videos from me, i got a little subscribe button down there. Just click it if you want to see more stuff. Hit the notification bell if you want to know when I'm posting next. And uh, I also stream on Twitch sometimes. Uh, it's just a hectic schedule. I'm trying to make it more often. But link in the description. Check it out. Anyway, with that being said, that's it. I am done. That's... Uh... I had so much hope as a gamer for this. As an audio file, though, at least I'm happy. But I'm also a gamer, so... I'm sad. I'm mostly a gamer. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time.